Welcome to the R video tutorial on list. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to create lists in R. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to continue on from where I typically have been working lately, which is with the Cycler 1 data. So again, I'm going to read it in. And the reason I keep putting this in these videos is I want to repeat what I've gone over so you keep seeing really important ideas over and over again. So if you get tired of seeing them, just know that redundancy is always a good thing uh, in this case. So first thing I'm going to do is run it and read in the data. I see the data was read in and it looks correct. So what I want to do is suppose I wish to combine things together that are of different types. So for example, suppose I have the summary here of my data that I learned how to do in my summary videos and I run this summary I can see some information about this and suppose I want to not have to constantly run summary but actually attach it to the data so I want to attach the summary to the data as well as possibly some other summaries so what I'm going to do here is try to do this so let's create some summaries Okay, so the first one we've created, but we haven't written it into anything. So I'm going to write this into some one, because I'm going to create other ones. Uh, here's some two, and this is going to be a summary, but I don't want all of the cyclers. So I want cycler one. However, I want cycler one where cycler one are just the women. And then I hit the dollar sign, and it'll bring up my tooltip. Gender equals, and remember it's two equals, female, which is capital F, and then a comma, don't forget the comma, and I want to get this summary, and then I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to get the summary for the males, so that I can look at the difference between the two possibly. So here's summary three, I'm going to change this to M, and let's give this a go and see what we come up with run these. Notice I come up with some tables over here that say sum 1, sub 2, sub 3. It allows me to grab this information anytime I want it. But what I would like to do is put this all together into one object in the sense that it has the data, it has all of my summaries attached to them, as well as possibly other information. The important thing here is, is these are different types of information. One is a data frame and the other is uh, our tables, which are different than data frames, and this is going to cause problems since they're different types of objects. And that's what a list does. It will pack a whole bunch of different types of things together, as you will soon see. So let's create our first list. So uh, let's start here with, uh, let's call it list one and we just start off with list and then we're going to give it a name so i'm going to call this cycler data that's the title of it and this is just going to be equal to cycler one which is my data set provided i spelled it correctly uh, if you notice i don't spell things correctly all the time and you should be aware that i put this in here so you don't feel bad when you don't all right, so I'm going to add something else to this. I'm going to add the uh, cycler summary. I'm going to call it summary equals sum one. So that's going to put the first summary on there. And then I'm going to do cycler summary. And then I'm going to put M on here for males. And this would be sum three. And similarly, cycler summary F, which is sum two. Okay. Now when I run this, it's going to put all of these together in a list object. So you have to be aware what we mean by a list. And it says here, over here in the environment, now list shows up and it says list of four. That means there's four things attached to list one. So you can see that there's cycler data and it gives you information about this, what columns are there, and then there's cycler summary, and then there's cycler summary M. But what we want to do now that we've created a list is peel things off of it. And we'll get ridiculous here in a minute and create a crazy uh, list. So let's say peel things off the list. 
Okay, so I'm going to do list one. And as soon as I do this, you can notice that my tooltip pops up here. And it says cycler data, and it's showing that it's a table. And then here's another table, and another table, and another table. So if I want just the summary, I can hit this and run it, and it will spit back the summary back to me. It's attached on here. And if I look at the list by itself, which uh, we could do, you can see that the dollar sign here works again. So if I scroll in my window here, I'm going to move it way up. You can see that I have dollar sign cycler summary F, and this is the summary for the females. Notice there are no males here. And then I can scroll up and I can see cycler summary M. Notice there are no females in here. And you can see uh, each of the values for each of the genders separately. And if I scroll up some more, you can see dollar sign cycler summary. And here's the table for the summary that we generated before. And at the very top, you can see, if I can scroll to it, this dollar sign cycler data. So that's how we peel things off is using the dollar sign. And, and there's an alternative way of doing this if you haven't named things, which I'll show you here in just a second. So if I want to peel something off that I haven't named, I can use double brackets. And if I hit double bracket one and run this, you'll see that it spits out the data at me. So here's what gets peeled off. This is the alternative way to do this. So this is using bracket notation and you have to use double brackets in order to get this to work. Uh, but once I've done this, I can uh, actually do other things with it. So uh, list two, one, double bracket two, you will see it's the summary. And what's fun with this is you can still peel more information off of this. So any way you want to do this, you can combine the operations we've learned before. So for example, let's put here combine operations from before. So for example, list one dollar sign i'm going to use the cycler data and then i can hit dollar sign and look all of a sudden my columns pop up so i can chain these ideas together so i can say well i want cycler cpk1 and i want it for the 12th person person number 12. so if i run this i will get the information directly out of that table which is 418. now if i go and look at the table so let's go see if this is actually correct if I go and look at the table that I created at the beginning, and I go down to person 12, and I look at their CPK1 data, it is exactly 418. So when you use lists, you can peel things off by chaining these ideas together. Because if you notice here, we have a dollar sign, a dollar sign, and a bracket in order to make this work, uh, which is good because it allows us to access individual items in the list in an effective manner. Okay, so suppose that I really want to put other things on this list as well, and this is uh, something else we can do. So we can do list one, uh, put here, add crazy stuff to the list, just to show you what you can add to these types of things. So I've added summaries. I can also add, for example, if I wanted to, I could make a matrix, which is, uh, as you know, a different type of data structure than a uh, data frame. So I'm going to make a matrix. I'm going to make it uh, 1, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 1. And this is going to have n rows, n row equals 2. And it's going to have n number of columns is equal to 2. And I'm doing this also for repetition, so you see these ideas repeating themselves again. And I'm also going to create a vector, so I'm going to call this uh, Y1, and this will be a vector. And I'm going to put text on here, Bob, Sally, oop, need that in quotes to make this work, Sally, and again, I'm going to use way. So here we have three individuals, and I'm going to put these on here, and I'm going to put these on our list. So we can put it all on a list. So I'm going to make this list two. And 
instead of starting over, I'm going to scroll up here real quick, and I'm going to copy and paste what I had above because I want all of this as well. And copy and paste is a great thing, by the way, if I haven't mentioned that before. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to move it down, and I'm going to paste it in. And then I'm going to change some things. So copy and paste is absolutely wonderful. You should get used to it because it's, it's such a good thing. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add on my matrix that I've defined uh, here as Z1 into my list. So I'm going to make it uh, matrix 1, and that's going to be equal to Z1. And here I'm going to have vector 1 equal to y1. And if I run this, it'll add these into a list and bundle them all together. And it says z1 not found. Why didn't it find it? Because you have to remember, if you don't run something in R, R doesn't see it. Just because it's sitting in the editor doesn't mean that R can actually use it. So I've ran this now, and now it should be able to put it into my list here. So I'm going to run this bit. And notice that list two comes up. It says it's a list of six. It has six objects in it. If I uh, click the description on this, it shows there's the cycle data. Here's the data. It says cycler summary. has information there. It has some one, some two, some three are the tables, Y1, and matrix, and vector. So it shows you all of the information that's attached to it. And we can pull things off here. So list and the tooltip will come up. If I can get my fingers to work. I have fat finger syndrome sometimes. Dollar sign. And you can see everything on the tooltip that is associated with the list. And you can see that they have different symbols. So this is a symbol for a vector, but the matrix and the data frames have similar uh, attributes. Now, lists are incredibly useful, and often that's what you're going to get out of lots of output. So that's why we're talking about them here. For example, later when we run regression or an ANOVA, the output is actually going to be a list, and that list is going to contain information, and we need to know how to peel that information from that list in order for it to be useful. All right, so this has been an introduction to lists. Uh, you can move on to the next video.